Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So a couple days ago, I gave some of my predictions for the top 2025 unrestricted free agents. So I thought today I would do my 2024 this summer restricted free agents for the top 15 restricted free agents. I think basically all these guys are going to sign. We got guys like Pedersen, Roenick, Jarvis, Sider, Hart, Swayman, Mercer. We're going to go through all 15 and I'm going to tell you what contract I expect them to sign as restricted free free agents. It's an absolutely loaded class. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Up first is Philip Hironic. Philip Hironic, I have him signing an eight-year deal worth $7.25 million. He's obviously been fantastic for the Canucks this season. 36 points in 42 games, playing 23-39 a night. He has been that ideal pair partner to Quinn Hughes, that number two defenseman. He's been great with Quinn Hughes and also great on his own. I don't think that he has a track record and he's not that young. He's going to be 26 when he signs this deal to demand like eight plus million. But I think 7.25 is very solid number two deep money in today's cap with the cap going up. So when looking at that eight years, 7.25, just lock him up. Forget about it. You get him for most of his prime last year or two of that deal might be a little bit bad. But if you're heroic, you cash in, you like playing in Vancouver. So I think an eight year, 7.25, maybe 7.5. I probably wouldn't go north of that is pretty fair value for a guy of his stature. Up next, Lucas Raymond. If you watch my redraft, some people think I, I hate Lucas Raymond because I had him at sixth overall, but Lucas Raymond, five years, $7.75 million. He obviously had that fantastic rookie season when he had 57 points, bit of a disappointment, disappointing sophomore season with 45 points, but he's back on pace. He has 33 points in 41 games, puts him exactly on 66 point pace. I think a four or five year deal makes some sense because I still think he has another level to go to. I'm not sure Eisenman, if he finishes with around 60 to 65 points or 66. I don't think Eiserman's going to give him this massive, massive contract. So I think you go around four or five years. Five years would definitely take him to unrestricted free agency. And then he absolutely cashes out at 26, 27. So when looking at this 7.75, if you're the Red Wings and you're trying to win in the next four years, that's very well cost controlled. Raymond at 7.75, he's probably already worth around seven to 7.5 at only 21 years old. So I think for both parties, this would make a lot of sense. And Raymond would absolutely get his eight year bag when he's 26. Next up, Cole Perfetti, three years, $5.75 million. I think there's more of a bridge with Cole Perfetti considering the Winnipeg Jets have a couple big contracts on the books for next season. You look at it, Neil Pionk, uh, Nate Schmidt, Alex Iafalo, all making a combined $16 million just next season. So I think after that, you sign Perfetti to a two to three year deal and then you give him his bag. He's been great this year. He has 29 points in 41 games, playing mainly second line minutes while that first line absolutely pops off. He's really been able to produce his own offense. I think Perfetti is a bridge candidate compared to a Raymond where they have a ton of cap space this summer. The Jets do have some, but it's the following year where they get some of their batter contracts off the books. So I think Perfetti is going to have to wait two to three years in order to get his big contract. There's a couple bridge deals on this, as you would expect with restricted free agents. The fourth guy, Matty Beneers. And th this is kind of a sad one because I thought, I thought they were going to get like an eight by eight done this summer after a 57 point rookie year. You expected a big, big contract for him, but for all intents and purposes, he's kind of shat the bed to start this season. He has 19 points in 41 games for the Kraken. Still has very good underlying defensive numbers. I still think that he has the potential to eventually be a very solid first line shutdown defensive center, but the offense just isn't there. 57 points, obviously, last year on pace for 38 this season. So I have him signing a three-year, $5.5 million deal. Again, he still is only going to be 20 or 21 when he signs this goddamn deal. 21, I think. So for him take three years, get your reputation back up. Then when you're 24, sign a bigger contract. But if you're the Kraken right now, you can't ensure that he's going to end up being your number one center. You definitely can't bet on an eight by eight with him. So I think 5.5 considering, I think he's better than a 38 point player right now. I still think he is a solid 45 to 50 point shutdown center. I think he's going to show that in the back half of the season, but you definitely cannot commit long-term to a Matty Beniers right now. So I think a bridge deal is almost a lock for a guy like Matty Beniers. Going over to the Carolina Hurricanes, Seth Jarvis, another guy that I have signing a bridge deal at three years, 6.5 
million dollars. He's probably gonna he's gonna cruise to sixty plus points. And I think when looking at the Carolina Hurricanes, a guy like Dmitry Orlov is gonna take up a lot of money next season. They do have a lot of money coming off the books. I think they give a guy like Martin Natchez maybe more of a long term deal, even though he hasn't been that good. But I think Jarvis is gonna go down the route of an RFA in three years. Six point five. Six point five is a decent payday for Seth Jarvis. And again, he played almost immediately after getting drafted. So in looking at him, he's gonna get his big deal in those three years. Let some of that money come off the books. Brett Burns still making 5.5, Orlov 7.7. They're going to clear off all their bad contracts. Not bad contracts, but older guys are going to be off the books. And as a result, they're going to be able to give Seth Jarvis a bigger deal when it's all said and done. Moritz Sider I have going long term, though. I have him at eight years, $8.3 million. I think the biggest comp, the, the most accurate comp for Moritz Sider is an Owen Power and a Jake Sanderson. And he definitely has, although he's a year older than Sanderson and two years older than Power, and they're all coming up at the same time, you look at it, Pow, uh, Sa- Sider has the longest track record among those three. He obviously won the Calder. He was a 50-point defenseman. Last year was a down year, still at like 42. This year, he started off fantastic, has slowed down at least offensively a little bit, but still 23 points in 41 games, playing a legit number one role on a Detroit team that is in the playoff mix. He's worth big money long term. Before the season, I may have would have said eight years, nine million. I think he has kind of got into the role of I don't know if he's ever going to be Norris caliber, but he can definitely be a number one defenseman on a good playoff team. And I think at eight point three million dollars, you sign that he's going to be twenty three when he signs this deal. It takes him to he's thirty one. That would be a very good deal for both parties when looking at more at Cider. First goalie, Carter Hart, five years, six point two five. This one's a little bit weird because. Uh, not insinuating anything, but the, we're definitely going to have to wait until the World Juniors 2018 Canada thing before any anybody from that team, I think, signs a long-term deal. But assuming Carter Hart's good to go, I think he signs a five-year, $6.25 million contract. Doesn't get like massive Ilya Sorokin kind of money because he isn't playing like Ilya Sorokin, but Carter Hart has displayed that he is a very good top 15, maybe even top 10 goalie the past two seasons. He did have that one weird fall off when he had an 877 in 2021, but over the past two years, three years, he's posted a 907 on not that good of Flyers teams. He's really carried them from being just outright bad to actually pretty decent. And this year, they're, they're actually pretty damn good. So in looking at Carter Hart, Yeah, I I think he's going to get some term, five years, 6.25. He's going to be 26 in the spring. So when looking at that, you lock him up for the rest of his prime years. 6.25 is pretty good starter money right now. Again, doesn't have the track record of a Connor Hellebuck that got 8.5, but Connor Hellebuck was older than Carter Hart. So I think five years at 6.25 is something that Danny Briere would sign up for his long-term goalie. They have some good goalie prospects, so I'm not sure they go like eight years just to see how it plays out. But I think definitely a five-year deal does make a lot of sense for the Philadelphia Flyers. The big dog, Elias Pettersson. Four years, $12.5 million. He's obviously balling out this season. Probably going to reset his career high in points, which he broke 100 last year. 57 points in 42 games thus far. He has the track record with that 100-point season. He's been around point per game every single season or before that. He basically has... He's basically... The production, when you compare it to William Nylander, who got 11.5, he's three years younger than William Nylander, plays center, has a better track record. So I think 12.5, what McDavid is getting right now. McDavid obviously signed that contract back in, what, like 2017? Times have definitely changed. And I went with four years, not saying that he's going to want to leave after those four years, but I think he saw what an Austin Matthews did in terms of maximizing his value. You sign this four-year deal, that would obviously take him to to unrestricted free agency, duh. But you reassess the market, you reassess your team, and then if you want to stay, then you sign another four-year deal at 13.5. Like, I don't think that a eight-year 13 or 13.5 deal is out there. So I think he can break this up into two four-year deals. And not saying again, not saying the Canucks are going to fall off, but this is definitely the first really successful season he's had with the Canucks. They do have a very high PDO. So I think Pedersen is going to keep his options open, sign a four or five-year deal at 12.5 because again, he's only 25 years old. So someone when he's 29 or 30 will give him another big, big, big contract. He's that special of a player. So I think a shorter term deal, but still some term on it, obviously makes a lot of sense. So I'm just going four years, $12.5 million. Quinn and Byfield, a very interesting one. I went with three years, 
Six million dollars. I, 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 it's kind of tough for Quinn Byfield because he's playing so well this season. Twenty-eight points in thirty-eight games, forming one of the best lines in all of hockey with Anze Kopitar and Adrian Kempe. But he doesn't have a track record. Thirty-three points in ninety-nine games before that. A three-year deal seems perfect for a guy like Byfield, given his lack of a track record. And also, you look at the LA Kings salary cap situation. Guess whose deal would come up at the same time as Quinn Byfield's three-year extension? Drew Doughty. Drew Doughty's $11 million. I assume by then that would get knocked down to five, six million million, assuming he doesn't age absolutely fantastic. So I think that makes a lot of sense for Rob Blake and the LA Kings. Kind of put him on the same timeline as Drew Doughty. Drew Doughty's cap hit goes all the way down. Byfields goes from $6 million to hopefully if he pans out, nine maybe by the time in three years with the salary cap going up so i think that makes sense for the la kings and if he develops into a legit 70 80 beyond guy that i think he's capable of i think it makes sense okay but moving on you probably just noticed my light went out i had to cut the scene and change it but we got sean dersey sean dersey i have at five years Six million dollars. He's really been a fantastic trade by Bill Armstrong. They sent out a second round pick for Sean Dursey. He has 21 points in 34 games, playing around 22, 23 minutes a night. Do I think that he is the Arizona Coyotes' future number one defenseman? No, that's why they took Simashev. That's why they're probably going to take a defenseman in the draft at some point over the next two years. But I think Sean Dursey is definitely a part of their future in terms of their top four. He's only 25 years old. So you lock him up on this five year, six million million dollar contract six million dollars is low end top pair high end second pair goddamn Dimitri Orlov as I mentioned before got 7.75 so when looking at Dursey yes I think he's a good second pair at the very least low end power play guy for the Coyotes he's fit in pretty well 25 years old five year deal you're, you're not you're not gonna get a fall off with that when he's 30 years old you're gonna get him for most of his prime years so I think a five by six makes a lot of sense for a guy like Sean Dursey next up Dawson, Mercer, Bridge. We're going with the bridge. Three years, $4.5 million. Basically, all of the other Jersey defense, uh, forwards, Jack Hughes, Heischer, Brat, Timo, they all got massive bags. But I think Dawson Mercer is going to have to wait for his, especially because he's had a bit of a down year after a brutal start. He has bounced back pretty well, but only 21 points in 39 games after having 56 points, including 27 goals last year. So when looking at a guy like Mercer, I think he's going to have to wait his time to get the deal. He doesn't have that breakout breakout season yet. And the track record has been a little bit up and down and he's playing when when they're fully healthy. He's the third liner right now for the New Jersey Devils. And when looking at this three-year deal, guess who it lines up with? We talked about Byfield and Kopitar. Andre Palat has three years left on his abysmal $6 million per deal. So you match those kind of up. Yes, you're going to have to also pay a uh, Hughes and Nemich at some point, Luke Hughes that is, but Palat gets off the books, then you can give Dawson Mercer maybe a four-year, $6.5 to $7 million deal after three seasons where he, he consistently gives you at least 50 to 60 points, maybe even more. So I think Dawson Mercer definitely, definitely going to get a bridge. I can't see Tom Fitzgerald somehow fitting in a six or seven-year deal because if I'm Mercer, I want six, 6.5, maybe even seven on if, if I'm getting a long-term deal, I want a high cap hit. So I think bridge is definitely the way to go for these guys. Jeremy Swayman, four years, $5.75 million. I think they're going to get a discount on this. The Boston Bruins always seem to get their guys for pretty cheap. And when looking at him, he's playing Vez the caliber this year. Not the best of late, but still a 920 and 2.47 goals against. He has a career 920. And yes, he does play on the Boston Bruins, which definitely help his stats. But I think we can all agree at this point, he is a top 10 goalie. He is definitely a top 10 goalie. So when looking at this deal, I kind of compared it to other RFA goalies like UC Soros and Igor Shosturkin. Soros is, I believe, was four years, five million. Shosturkin's was four four years, 5.66 million. So when looking at it, it's about the same, a little bit more because he has a bit of more of a track record and the cap is expected to go up. But I don't think... Sweeney's gonna have Sweeney's gonna end up paying Olmark and uh, Swayman all this money for next season. I don't think they're gonna give Omar or Swayman this massive seven or eight year deal at north of seven million dollars. So I think Swayman's gonna take his three or four million dollar deal, take himself to unrestricted free agency, where then maybe he can. Ca- I think he's gonna stay with the Bruins regardless. But when he's an unrestricted free agent, use that as leverage, get his seven or six, seven, eight year deal at a pretty high cap hit with the cap even exploding more. So I don't si- see him sign 
signing for that long term. I think Boston gets it done. Seems like he loves playing for the Boston Bruins. Uh, he's a great player. He played in the University of Maine, I believe. So he's been around the area for the past goddamn six or seven years. So I don't see him going elsewhere. We're into our final three. At number three, well, I'm not really counting these down, but the third to last, Casey Middlestat. Casey Middlestat, I have at five years, $6.75 million. I think he comes in below a Thompson and a Cousins, but when you look at what he's doing this season, 35 points in 42 games, he's one of the best playmakers and pa- more so passers in the entire league, 59 points in 82 games last year, really finding his groove. Again, I don't think he goes, definitely doesn't go north of Thompson or Cousins unless he breaks like the 75 point mark this year. But if he ends up 65, 70 points and he's a 24, 25 year old that has improved basically ever the past three years by decent margins I think you're gonna have to give him somewhere around 6.75 million dollars and I think considering the Thompson and the Cousins deal if Cousins he picks up his play he's not playing even to his 7.1 million dollar cap it right now but assuming those guys pick up their play Casey Middlestat should not be making more than them and also with that surplus value you can give it out to a Casey Middlestat 6.75 over that time over those five years that's good second liner money with the cap going up so I think Casey Middlestat would definitely be worth a five year 6.75 million dollar deal and Kevin Adams has been able to negotiate fantastic with a lot of his free agents so I expect nothing less I wouldn't be surprised if he comes comes in even at like 6.25 and they just somehow get something done like that Martin Natchez Five years, $6 million. He has not been nearly as good as he was last year at 71 points. This year, only 26 and 38 games. I see some Hurricanes fans that do not like his overall game. He's a minus 13 this season. He is 25 years old. I think he kind of... He fumbled the bag, similar to him out of Benier, 71 points. If you put up another 70-point season, you could be looking at a 7-by-7 seven seven for a Martin Natchez. I think you're definitely still going to have to give him a healthy $6 million on the AAV when you look at his track record. He's been very inconsistent. He had that fantastic COVID-shortened season. Then in 2021, 2021 uh, 2022, dipped a little bit, then 71. Now seems to be back on pace for like low 50s probably, but when looking at Martin Natchez, still a very good winger, still definitely a part of their long-term plans at only 25 years old. He did take a bridge last time, so I think he's going to need some term at $5 million, but or five years, but at $6 million, that's a pretty reasonable price for a guy like Martin Natchez. Our final dude is Kent Johnson. I'm going to go two years, $3.5 million. A very up and down season for Kent Johnson. Started out pretty bad. Gets sent down to the AHL. Absolutely tears it up. He's back up to 14 points in 28 games. I, I, I just don't see the Columbus Blue Jackets giving him a lot of term based on what they've seen. I don't see Kent Johnson. Like, Kent Johnson right now would get what? Like a 5 by 5 maybe a 5.55 after back-to-back 40-point seasons. I don't think that he would get a juicy long-term deal. So if I'm him, I'm taking a a two-year deal, 3.5, and then hoping that I go from 40-ish point pace to finally breaking out 55, 60, 70, and then locking myself into a long-term deal. So I think a two-year deal does make a lot of sense between the Columbus Blue Jackets in Kent Johnson's overall camp because Adam Fantilli, for all intents and purposes, kind of has passed Kent Johnson. So in looking at that, just two years, solidify yourself as that potential second line center, maybe third line center, ball out, and then you will be able to get a much more lucrative lucrative contract in two years with the cap going up. Do not lock yourself into some bad deal. So that is it. Let's run through it. Ronick, eight years, $7.25 million. Lucas Raymond, five years, 7.75. Perfetti, three years, 5.75. Beneers, fumbled a little bit, three years, 5.5. Jarvis, three years, 6.5. Moritz Sider, eight years, 8.3. Hart, five years, 6.25. Pedersen, four years, 12.5. Matches McDavid becomes the fourth highest paid player in the entire NHL for the following season. Byfield, three years, 6.25. Sean Dursey, five years, $6 million. Mercer, oh, whoops, Mercer, three years, 4.5. Swayman, four years, 5.75. Middlestat, five years, 6.9. Natchez, five years, $6 million. And Kent Johnson, two years, 3.5. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think that Carolina situation is by far the most interesting development. How are they going to pay Jarvis and Natchez? Because I think Jarvis is better this year as well as being 
three years younger. So how they're going to handle that, that, that agency agent back and forth comparing and contrasting is going to be very interesting. If there was one guy that I think maybe gets traded out of this bunch. I would probably just say Sean Thursey because he is a little bit on the older side. He's 25, going to be 26 and the coyotes maybe could move in a different direction, but I don't think he's going to trade it. I think basically all of these guys are going to remain with their current teams. So yeah, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Very interesting. This is a loaded restricted free agency class. I think a couple of these guys probably will sign in the next month or so, but most of these will take it to the summer. We'll have long, drawn-out discussions, but there's really no... You don't have to worry about restricted free agency negotiations until we really get into, like, August, September, the Mitch Marner, William Nylander situations. But I think most of these guys are going to lock it in. None of these guys are going to ask for the absolute moon. <coughs> Mitch Marner, $10.9 million. So... Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you want me to look ahead to the 2025 class? And yeah, I'll be seeing you in the next one.